So this is question 2A of the 2016 probability distributions exam. A supermarket has eight employees who are on call to help out during busy periods. Based on the supermarket's records, the probability of one of these employees being unavailable when called is estimated to be 0 0.14. The supermarket needs to call all eight employees during one particularly busy period. Using an appropriate model, calculate the probability that fewer than three of these employees will be unavailable when called. Okay, so what do we got to do here first, folks? Well, we've got to work out which distribution model is the most appropriate here. So, let's think about it. Pause the video and have a think. Well, first thing we need to ask is, is our variable discrete, that means counting, or continuous, which means measuring? So, what is the variable? of interest in the situation? What's the thing that we're counting or measuring? Well, it's the number of employees that will be unavailable. Okay, so that's that's counting, so that's discrete, isn't it? So if we go to our map of the distributions, we know that we're not dealing with normal, uniform, or triangular. We're either dealing with binomial or Poisson, the ones with the bar graphs in them. So let's have a look at how they how we can tell which one it is. So with binomial, it's used to estimate the probability of a certain number of successful outcomes out of a fixed number of trials. Whereas with Poisson, it's used to estimate the probability of an event occurring a certain number of times during a stated interval of time or space. So do we have a fixed number of trials or is it just occurring in an interval? Let's have a look. We're told it's during a busy period, but it doesn't say how long that period is. It does say it's out of eight employees. So, therefore, which one is it? It's out of a fixed number of trials. The eight employees are the trials. And that makes it, you guessed it, binomial. So we need to start with a binomial model. Okay, so I'm going to write that down first. Always start by writing down the distribution you're going to use. Binomial. And then you need to write down its parameters. What are the parameters of the binomial distribution? Well, it tells us here, they are n, which is the number of independent trials, and pi, which is sometimes we call p, which is the probability of success on each individual trial. So, how many trials are there? Well, there's eight employees, and the probability of success in each individual trial, I'm going to call that P, that is 0 0.14, the probability of being unavailable for each employee. Okay, so from there, we need to work out the probability that fewer than three are unavailable. So the next thing we need to do to make sure we get that clear in our head is we need to do our number line. So I'm going to number the possible number of employees who could be unavailable. So that's going to be 0 right through to 8, like so. And I'm going to circle the ones I'm after. So fewer than 3. Does fewer than 3 include 3? No, it doesn't. Does it include 2? Yep, it does. In fact, it includes 0 through to 2. Now, if you do this on a graphics calculator, and the exam is written expecting you've got one of these, then we want to go Menu, Stat, distribution, and it's going to be binomial distribution. Now, PD or CD? PD stands for probability distribution. CD stands for cumulative distribution. But the easiest way to actually remember that is to think of it as P for particular. Do we want a particular number of successful outcomes? Or C for cumulative, which is, do we want to accumulate outcomes? Here, we want more than one outcome. We want 0, 1, and 2. So we're wanting to cum accumulate outcomes. So that means we want B, C, D, F2. Now, when you reset your calculator, as they will on the exam, it's going to come up with list. So you're going to see this on the exam day. You have to change it to variable. So you hit F2, changes it to variable. 
Okay, number of, now we want the maximum number of successful outcomes. So the maximum number, number who call in, um, the maximum number who are unavailable, and that is two. So I'm going to type in two, and then number of trials is eight employees, probability of success is 0 0.14, and execute. And I get 0 0.9109 to four significant figures. So we need to label what we worked out here. So let's start with the question, which was probability of there being fewer than three. So x is less than three. And you can just write is less than if, uh, if the signs confuse you. That's fine. It won't affect your grade. And that is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to two. And if the signs confuse you, you could just write that as the probability of two or less. Again, that won't affect your grade if you do that. So you, if you get confused by the signs, then, then you can do that. That's fine. And it equals 0 0.9109. Rounded to four significant figures. And because we used our graphics calculator, um, then we're going to write GC so the examiner knows that's how we got it. Cool. Now, justify the use of probability of the probability distribution for your answer in part one. So that just means how does the situation satisfy the requirements or the conditions needed to apply a binomial distribution model? So if we go back and we think about the requirements of a binomial distribution model, and the requirements are we need to have a fixed number of n identical trials two possible outcomes for each trial, one regarded as success and the other regarded as failure. And probability of success needs to be the same for each trial. And each trial needs to be independent. In other words, knowing the result of one trial must give no information about the other trials. A way you can remember that is International Fight Club 2. This is a bit of a mental hook. Some people find helps. International Fight Club 2, the in and international stands for independent trials. The FI and fight stand, is, is to remember that FI and fixed number of trials. The C and club is to remind us of the C and constant probability of success for each trial. And the two is for the two possible outcomes for each trial. So International Fight Club 2. So if we apply those here, and usually we want to start with the ones that are definitely met, that are really ob some of the obvious ones. The whole point here is you've got to link it to the context. So firstly, let's write down what we're doing. Used binomial model because we have a fixed number of trials. And then in context, really important, eight employees were called. Okay, so that is the... Fixed number of trials, sort of. Okay, what else? Two possible outcomes for each trial. And I'm going to say for each, two possible outcomes for each employee who was called. So I'm getting that context in there already. And the outcomes were unavailable or available. Okay. Um, so that's that one. Okay, next. We've got independent and we've got constant probability of success. So they're, all, they're usually the two I leave till last because often they're less clear cut. It's always easier to start with something that's a bit more clear cut. So we have to assume, don't we? We have to assume that whether one employee is unavailable doesn't affect whether another employee is unavailable. So I've got, I'm assuming that whether each employee is available or not is independent of whether each other employee is. So the last one we have to look at is the constant probability of success. So in this case, that means, do we have reason to believe that the probability of each of those eight employees being unavailable will stay at 0 0.14? Well, all we know is that that's based on the supermarket's records. So we can't really know for sure that that's gonna be the true chance of all eight of those employees. So that's, an, that's something we're having to assume. We're having to hope. That actually may not be true. There might be other things causing them to be more or less likely to be unavailable. So we're assuming that 
that each of the eight employees has a 0.14 chance of being unavailable. So we've been through our four conditions and we've linked each one to the context. If you don't link it to the context, guess what grade you get for the question? A big fat round zero. So you've got to have that context language. Can't get away with just saying fixed number of trials, two possible outcomes, independent, constant probability of success. You can't just say that. You have to talk about employees and availability. You have to talk about the context, friends, all right? Okay, let's look at the marking scheme. So, we'll look at the criteria. So, achievement, you just have to have the correct probability of 0 0.9109. Merit, correct probability and model identified as binomial and justified with at least two conditions linked to the context. So, you've got to have that context in there, like I was saying. Okay, I'll make a new video for part B. Catch you later.